Second Chronicles chapter 1. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. David's died, First Chronicles. And the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly, made him more. You know, you take a, mic take a microscope, you magnify it, make it more and more and more. Then Solomon spake to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges, to every governor in all Israel, the chief of their fathers. So Solomon is speaking to the governments of Israel. Notice, notice here, governor. In the United States, we got 50 governors, over 50 states. Where did that title come from? It came right out of the Bible. I'm going to say this at once, and I am not going to say it today, present. But I'm going to say America was a Christian nation under the Bible. That's far from going today, but you look at the forms of the government, you look at ideas, the words, they come from the Bible. So Solomon and all the congregation with him, the people, went to the high place that was at Gibeon. And if we got time, it'll be interesting to study Gibeon for a moment. For there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. And that's where the tabernacle in the days of, of solomon in the days of david it was brought to gibeon the great high place but the ark of god this was a mercy seat had david brought up from courage of jerem to the place which david had prepared for it for he had pitched a tent for it at jerusalem okay so we have a division here that we learned in Chronicles. Over here was half the tabernacle that Moses made in Gibeon. And over here, David built a tent for the ark. When we look at the ark, when David said the ark dwells amongst tents and all that, the brazen altar is not there. The, the wash basin is not there. The tabernacle is not there. It's in Gibeon. David brought the ark into Jerusalem, but he didn't bring it all. Because watch. Moreover, the brazen altar, that's that first thing that the people would come and look at. That's where all the blood was spilt. That's where all the sacrifices were burned. That Bazil, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made. And that's Exodus 27, 1 and 2. And Exodus 31, 2. So that's Exodus 31, 2. Here is what Moses made. He put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation saw onto it in Gibeon. Not in Jerusalem where the ark is. So already the ark has been displaced, has been removed from the, from the most holy place, Moses' place, and has been brought into Jerusalem into a tent that David made. Kind of interesting. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night, did God appear to Solomon, and this happens many times, God shows up in a night. He, I am not going to limit God and say he cannot show up to you at night. He cannot speak to you in dreams, but that's not the common way today. Today we have 66 books in the King James Bible, and God's going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you by studying the Word of God and rightly dividing. Now, I'm not going to say God can't use a dream, that God can't do these things as he's done in the Old Testament, but when we go to books and magazines and seances and the people of witchcraft and all that and you know read tea leaves and a bumps on your head that's all wickedness and sin and when we do get that idea from our deceitful and wicked heart jeremiah said we are to say okay this if this is what god said what does the bible say all right i'll give you an illustration i'll give you a good one it just came in the news again recently so i can use it we're going to build an ark in tennessee Scripture and verse, please. And we're going to sell tickets. Scripture and verse, please. 
How about that? Nowhere does does they say go in all the world and build an ark and charge admissions. Just go in all the world and preach the gospel. And you probably got thousands, maybe millions of, of, of Christians who are worldly and go see that stupid thing. And, oh, wow. Oh. And when we get to heaven, God says, you guys had it all wrong. That's not what the Bible said. That's not what I told you to do. Oh, let's use the world's entertainment today to get the kiddies and get the people to church. What's the Bible say about it? Love not the world. Marvel not the world hates you. Go ye preach the word of God. Preach the gospel. Well, you know, the Antichrist is coming. We got to get everybody ready for his left behind. And we got to get everybody ready for the mark of the beast. Don't receive the mark right now because, you know, that's, that's the womb of the devil and all that. Not for the church age. You're not rightly divided. Oh, there's earthquakes all over the world, and there's all kinds of fire and all kinds of diseases. Jesus Christ is coming on March 44th. In the, no, you haven't read the scriptures. Jesus said, not even, not even the angels, not even Jesus himself knows the time. And you got to rightly divide the word of God. Now, God may lay on your heart. What's the scripture say? In that night God, did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Period. Look at that blank check. You know, when Herod deals with, I forget the, the daughter there, Herodias, ask if anything half my kingdom. When Esther comes up to her husband after Herod, he says, Esther, ask if anything half my kingdom. In other words, don't come up to me and ask for my entire kingdom. I am not giving you a blank check. God comes up to Solomon and says, name it, claim it. There it is. You want a Bible verse for name it, claim it? There it is right there. And that's not nowhere near the church age. That's where they get this, that mess wrong. God told Solomon, okay, ask, and I'll give it to you. And Christians go running in, oh, I like that verse. Why don't we claim that for our ministry? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you taking that verse out of context, and you don't even know the context of that verse. I can do through all things through I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, jump off the building and fly. I got a great building. Take the Sears Tower or the New York, or the uh, World Trade Tower. Oh, well, not the World. Yeah, then you got the new one or the Empire State Building. Go jump off those buildings and do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Fly. When I worked for the grocery store, there was a worldly song saying, "I can fly, I can fly, I can fly." I'd be like, "Yes, yeah, go ahead and try it." So, when God gives Solomon a blank check, it ain't to me. My name ain't Solomon. And if my name was Solomon, it wouldn't apply to me. Scripture is scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not, not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. These people that go into false doctrines, they're going to be ashamed one day standing before God and the people they deceive. Because no one studied the scripture. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shown great mercy. Well, look, look. Solomon asked whatever you want. Lord God, you're great merciful. Solomon has not even opened his mouth to say, okay, this is what I want. He starts bragging about God. Thou show great mercy unto David my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Okay, God, David was a great man. He, you're the great God of my father. My, my father has died. You have put me and him in position. We're king. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. David told Solomon, God made me a promise. God made a covenant with me to share mercies of David. And Solomon quotes the scriptures that his father told him what, David, what God told David. So what Solomon's saying here, God says, hey, ask anything. He is assuring with scripture what he's about to ask. And we are able to do that, even the church age, we can quote the scriptures to God. Whatever our needs, whatever our prayer is, whatever it comes to be, if there's a rightly dividing of scripture that we can do, we can apply it. 
My wife was in the hospital, uh, near death again. And that, that Paul speaks about this man who, who's sick unto death. And everybody was upset. But God gave him the power. And Paul says, listen to God, if he were to die, he would add sorrows to sorrow. I use that twice. When Moses finds out that Miriam's getting leprosy, Moses cried out to God and said, Lord, I beseech you, heal thee. I use that verse. Heal her, Lord. And that's not taken out of context. Moses couldn't heal her. Aaron couldn't heal her. She couldn't hear. The only power to heal Mary was God himself. He said, okay, in two weeks, I'll heal her. It wasn't two weeks for us, but still. Still. For thou hast made me king over a people. You mean they didn't vote for Solomon? You mean David didn't say... All right, it's going to be Solomon, none of my other sons. No, God told David already, Solomon is going to be that king. But Solomon says, it's not the people that did it. It's not the priests that did it. It is you, God, has put me in office. Like it or not, God is the one that puts the people in office. The devil can go up to God and say, God, yes, I want to put this man right here. He's going to serve me, the devil. He's going to do satanic thing. He's going to be wicked. He's going to be vile. This is your world. This is the man I want in that office. God can give him permission or not give him permission. Job 1, Job 2. But God's the render of who is who of who. But thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in a multitude. All right? Solomon is officially, you got King Saul, King David, King Solomon. You've had a bunch of judges. You've had Moses and you had Joshua. Lead them from the children of, of Exodus, Egypt. Lead them out until now we've got kings. And Solomon says when he looks out over the children of Israel and the population that has been numbered in the book of Numbers and a partial of the numbering of David using Joab, Solomon says at this point, approximately 1015 BC, Israel is as the dust. Of the earth. Can you imagine what Israel is today? And God promised Abraham they shall be as the dust of the earth. He promised another son, he said, they shall be as the stars in the in the heavens, and they shall be as the sand on the seashore. Come on. If Israel is not God's people, how are they the most of all the people in the world? And yet they have not been utterly wiped out or destroyed. Like, find me a Babylonian today. Find me, Mr. Modern Bible, find me original Greek that speaks the original Greek, please. Find me a Mesopotamian. Find me a Ur of Chaldees. Man, Solomon says there are many Jews. There's been many Jews. They're God's people. Give me now, okay, here he goes, wisdom and knowledge. There's no understanding. Mark that. Knowledge is what you know. It's what Solomon knows. Wisdom is the ability to apply what you know. Solomon knows how to set forth and get that temple to be built. Solomon knows, okay, this is the gold, this is the silver. Gold goes here, silver goes there. You can't use iron here. You sure can't put wood there, but that wood goes over there. Solomon knows all that, but he doesn't have understanding. And in the Bible, understanding is your relationship to God. And Solomon's going to lose this right away. He knows who God is. He knows how to apply God. He just doesn't understand the knowledge of the holy. And he'll blow it in a moment. He said, now, wisdom and knowledge. Why? That I may go out and come in before this people. Before the children of Israel, I want wisdom and knowledge. I don't want wisdom and knowledge for a degree to hang on the bathroom wall. I don't want to be called a doctor. But Lord, you've got so many people as the dust of the earth. There are so many around that they are your people. I need wisdom. I need to know. I need to know how to know and what to do with what I know, the wisdom and the knowledge of those people so I can be their king and I can be their king under you, God. For who, for who can judge 
This thy people, God. God. That is so great. And people will come, judge not least you be judged. God's able to judge. And Solomon's going to be put to a trial. He's going to have these two women. This is my baby. That's my baby. No, this is your baby. That's my baby. And, and Solomon's going to apply to God. And God say, listen, I got these two bickering women right here. One is right and one's wrong. What do I do? And God replied wisdom and knowledge to know how to handle that. That came from God. In the law system of the Jewish people, in the law and the law systems of America, believe it or not, if we got a case and we go to a civil court, a, a minor court in our county, and we say, you know what, I don't like that. that. That's an improper ruling. It's wrong. We would move it to a higher court in the state. And then we could move it to the state Supreme Court and say, listen, that ruling's wrong. You're, you're totally wrong. I appeal. I don't believe you guys know all the facts. You're not listening. For whatever reason, you're not doing this judgment properly. And we have a Supreme Court in this nation. <laughs> Sorry, say that tongue in cheek. And we were, they would appeal to the Supreme Court that this is the final actual law. You can't go any other place but the Supreme Court in, in America. And what we have in the law system, Solomon is telling God, say, God, you are the Supreme Court. And Moses had people that would judge. He had the Levites set up and the priests set up to judge between blood and blood, and between case of case. You have my cow. No, that's my cow. Ba 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 ba. And if they couldn't decide it, they would bring it to a to the priest of Jerusalem. And the priest in Jerusalem, <coughs> excuse me, the priest in Jerusalem could not handle it. Then the priest would turn to God and say, God, we need an answer. And when God answered, there was no other court. And Psalm is speaking out, God, you're the great God, you're the supreme God, you're the judge of all the earth that Abraham spoke about when he's speaking to God about Psalm and Gomorrah, shall not the judge of all the world do right, all the earth do right. So Psalm is reaching out to that supreme God and I need help judging people. I don't know. I don't know who's right or wrong. I, I need help. That is so great. And that means the popular, there's many people, there are many people out there, there's ones innocent and they're guilty, and Lord, I don't know how to judge them. Now imagine this, imagine any judge in America would get together with all the judges, imagine all the circuit court judges in Volusia County would get together before their day and plead to God, the merciful God, the mighty God, the judge of all the earth say, Lord God, we got people going to stand before us today. We have no idea. We're not going to take bribe for every single case that we get. Lord God, will you put into our hearts to know who's innocent, who's guilty? That ain't going to happen. You're not going to make America great. You rejected the Bible, you rejected Jesus Christ, and you don't want anything to do with it. Then, and God said to Solomon, because this was thy heart, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. This was not Solomon's head, this was his heart. And thou hast not asked riches. Now, if you were to stop anyone in the world today, I won't pick on America, pick on anybody in the world, stop any person, any 10 people and say, listen, you can have whatever you want. What would you want? We're going to find the answers right here. Some would say, I want riches. I want all the riches. Some would say, I want all the money, all the wealth. Riches would be gold, silver, diamonds, all the gems, all the greatest job ever to have. Wealth would be all the money. Or honor, that's fame. I want to be the, the head quarterback of this court. I want to be the, the, the one that wins all the Tonys. I want to be, everybody sees me on a magazine cover. nor has asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies. Solomon didn't say, hey, kill him. That's kind of funny, because when you read the book of Psalms, David's writings, David's like, go, go get him. My enemies, go kill him. Solomon didn't ask for that. Solomon did not ask for the golden rule, what they do to me, let me do unto them. And Solomon's in peace. Neither yet hast thou asked for a long life. Some people would ask, I want a longer life. 
but has asked wisdom and knowledge, no understanding, for thyself, now that sounds selfish, comma, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. You want wisdom, you want knowledge for the people. The government of the people, for the people, by the people, don't care about the people. Solomon does. God, Solomon wants God happy with his people. And they're not going to be happy if they don't have a king that does right. Now watch what God does. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. No understanding. We'll see that in a moment. I will give thee riches. That's not what he asked for. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. Well, I'm going to give you riches too. And I'm going to give you wealth. And I'm going to give you honor. Because of his heart wasn't selfish. It wasn't me, 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 me. How great thou art, God. God said, okay, fine. I'm going to give you your requests. I'm going to give you things you did not request for. I'm going to take care of you, Solomon. I will give thee riches, wealth, and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee. Every king before Solomon, all the pharaohs before Solomon. Such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Have you ever heard the riches of the Arabian kings? That they got their own indoor ski places in their malls. They got these lavagant buildings. They got these lavagant feasts. They got these lavagant. It's even mentioned in the book in the Bible of Esther, and it's mentioned how great these are. And God told Solomon, "The world envies all that, but you're the greatest, both past, present, and future king. There's going to be no other king like you." There's going to be no other riches of kings like you that has been or will ever be again. You're going to be the king, not of kings, but you're going to be the king to mark that it came from me, it was by me, and I have blessed you. Though Satan may set up people in the government, though Satan may guide your government, you may have all what you will have to have. You have not going to have what I have given Solomon. Your nation would fall. The nation fell. Judah fell. It broke into two after Solomon died when his son took over. Solomon went into lasciviousness with women. He went into false gods. He went to building temples for God. He went into complete disobedience to God. And still, God blessed him. God helped him. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place, which was at Gibeon, to Jerusalem, from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. So he left Gibeon, goes back home. This all happened when he was in Gibeon. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, an army, and he had 1,400 chariots, 12,000 horsemen, which he placed in the chariot cities, he had his own chariot cities, with the king at Jerusalem. So he was into a chariot and he's at peace, still building up a military. They may have been also transportation. They got those kinds of things that, you know, in Japan and China where, you know, where guys ride in a bike or has an animal and you hop in the back and they take you around. That may be it too. Now we get in trouble. Now we get where there's no understanding of God. We'll read these two verses, then we'll jump to Deuteronomy 17. <clears throat> and the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenty as his stones. There was a stockpile of gold and silver that any nation would love to desire. Sounds like, put that down. It's just it's a stone. It's a chunk of silver. So it's Put it down, will you? Just leave it there. And cedar trees made he as sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. Now, people saying today that Solomon wiped out the cedar trees in Lebanon, wiped out the, the trees in all the area. Here it says he planted trees. 
He planted trees so much in the Vale. They were just like the sycamore trees. The sycamore trees I would take as there's a lot of them. Well, guess what? The beauty of the cedar tree, there were more than that. And they were all planted by Solomon. They were all used by Solomon. Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt. We'll read about that in a moment. And linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. It was wealthy. It cost a lot. Probably not on sale. Now let's look at Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. And let's see the lack of understanding. Solomon did not understand the word of God. Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. Starting off verse 14 and 15 is about Israel choosing a king. And about that king, verse 16. But he, the king, shall not multiply horses to himself. Solomon failed that. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt to and that he should multiply horses. Solomon just broke that. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. Solomon broke that. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. He will do that. That his heart, we just read about his heart, turn not away. His heart told God, I want wisdom. I want understanding. I mean, I want wisdom. I want knowledge. That heart will be turned away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And when we come back over to Chronicles, it says it's just like rocks. Look at all the horses he's got. Look at all the merchandise he's getting from Egypt. And the Holy Spirit will give us the verse 17 of Chronicles to show how much he violated Deuteronomy 17. The Holy Spirit is going to record how much it costs. And they fetched up and brought forth out of Egypt violation chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150 shekels of silver and so brought they horses out of all the kings of the Hittites uh, they were supposed to have been wiped out the kings of Syria by their means now we got a few moments here we mentioned in verse 3 Gibeon Solomon and all the congregation with him went to a high place that was in Gibeon and that's where the ark that not the ark, but that's where the tabernacle that Moses built. There it is. The ark is in Jerusalem. Now, about Gibeon, it's kind of interesting when we turn to Joshua 9.3. I don't know how much we're going to read, but Joshua 9.3 is interesting. Joshua has come into the land. Joshua has been fighting. Joshua has been winning. He lost against Ai. He beat Ai. And there's, there's one nation in the promised land that God told him, you go wipe them totally out. But there's one group of people in Joshua 9.3, and when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard, that's where Joshua, I mean, that's where Solomon is right now. That's where the tabernacle is. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did, they did work willingly. And went and made it as if they had ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up. I think Jesus spoke a parable about that. Putting new wine in old bottles. And old shoes and clothes upon their feet. In Israel, their feet did not swell and their clothes did not. These people here of Gideon came to Joshua in the land and said, hey, we're ambassadors. We're lying to you. Look at our old clothes. Look at our moldy bread. Look at our wine. It's burst the bottles. We come from a very, very far away. We fear you. We want to make a league with you. We fear you and we fear your God. And Joshua, wrongly without prayer, makes a league with these people. And these people that feared God and feared Joshua and feared the nation of Israel, when we come to Second Chronicles chapter 1 with Solomon as king, that very place of Gibeon is where the, the tabernacle of Moses sits. And when we look at chapter 10, verse 2, 
about Gibeon, chapter 2, Joshua chapter 10, verse 2. This is the nations that feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities. What's there right now? God's there in Chronicles. And because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. And this is the same city that, that Solomon runs to where they have anchored the tabernacle. But David has taken the ark and brought it amongst tents. Why didn't he bring it all to Jerusalem, I wonder? I can't answer that. But that's Gibeon. Glory to God. 